acceptable. It revolutionized our culture. Positively, negatively. AD 35, the Declaration of Independence. And at this time, Haile Selassie was getting prepared because as he was coming through from the 1890s, Italy, Mussolini and them wanted to go into Ethiopia and take over Ethiopia. I'm touching on this because of the relevance between colonization, constitution and Christianity. <clears throat> Why Rastafara and Haile Selassie? Because Haile Selassie protected and maintained his sovereignty. His sovereignty. Even when he went into exile, he still maintained his sovereignty. And sovereignty is important today just as it is yesterday and it's still an issue that we still need to address. I look to Rastafara and Haile Selassie because of that example, because of sovereignty. Even at the advent of all of colonization against all of Africa, this third world country man that had not very many intellects and money and power was able to retain his sovereignty, something that our people lost years ago. So he gives an example of how sovereignty can be maintained for any nation. From the declaration to the 1840, the Tiriti Waitangi, all the way to the 1860s, then there was uh, land wars in this country. We also came through slavery too, in the 1800s. But one of the atrocities that our tribes also committed was slavery amongst ourselves. So there were issues, even through Christianity, that we had to deal with as a culture and the people to re be reborn. From the Kotahitanga movement of the 1860s, these are all part of the movements that were happening of consciousness as indigenous people here and also across the seas. And from this time, from 1884, when Tafio was travelling overseas to go and look for the redemption of our people and to seek justice for the Treaty of Waitangi in England, Haile Selassie was preparing for a war against Italy. By 1914, King Irata travelled to England. 1919, Ratana, also with 34,000 uh, in support, travelled. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, in 1920, travelled to overseas. 1921, 22, 23, 24, he did a national tour seeking a mandate of our people. That mandate he will take to the League of Nations. At that same time, while he was travelling to the League of Nations, he went in 1924 to England and he went to Geneva and also to South Africa. And he went to 47 countries around the world. During his visit around the world, he also met up with Farrakhan Muhammad and also Marcus Messiah Gavi in New York. And there, through the Black Star Liner, Rata Nassau, the amalgamation of the black slaves in America and the amalgamation of the black slaves in South Africa. And Ratana stood in Cape Town and as he saw the slaves that were on the, on the dock of the ships and as you can see them, they're just out at the port and the slaves were outside holding coal baskets carrying around food with whistles in, front, in their mouths and as they moved to keep them going, they had to keep blowing the whistle. Ratana got uh, his rope out, 40 and they placed a fariki of metal kai on the wharf and he asked uh, the head, ma uh, the, head uh, the captain if he could put food out on the table for all of the slaves. And there they put it, you can see just on the far right there of him, there's a basket with bread in it. And he was showing the love to the slaves in Durban, South Africa. And as he fed the slaves, he stood up and he said, and he says, where the head shall become the tail, and the tail shall become the head. I am saddened that these people are treated like dogs, but one day, through the love and the divine light, they shall be lifted, and redemption shall come upon these people, and shall be reliberated. That was on the 21st of May, 1924. 21st of May 1994, 70 years later, exactly, Nelson Mandela breaks the, the hold of apartheid and becomes the first black uh, South African Prime Minister. For us as Ratana, that's a fulfillment of Ratana's prophecy. And here you can see Ratana, who's on a rickshaw, showing how a high chief of the Zulu nation was being treated. 
as a, 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 as a slave. And Ratana was showing our people how our ariki, our ariki of a tribe can be treated. So he foretold the fall of the Westminster system. He foretold the fall of apartheid. And he also foretold the coming of a new day and a new generation. And as I said, he had the opportunity while in the Mediterranean Sea, the ship, there were two ships that passed in the night and on the other ship was Farrakhan Muhammad. And they both stopped. And when he was in America in 1925 in New York, he met Marcus Messiah Garvey and heard Marcus Messiah Garvey speak and about the, uh, the Black Star Liner. And so the star and the moon for us from the Muhammads to Japan to Marcus Messiah Garvey inspired the star and moon of the Ratana Church and movement. So Ratana took a world tour around the world to seek the redress of the Treaty of Waitangi. And he prophesied many things including the redemption and the turn of the tide when north shall become the south, south become the north, east shall become the west and the west shall become the east. In other words, he's saying there's going to be a shift of balance of power in the world. This is the Komatu as he was at the French Embassy in London. And again, they were all inspired by the one same thing as I was talking about. Even with Rastafarianism and Marcus Messiah Garvey. They were talking about freedom. 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 In Geneva 1924, he led the League of Nations and there... It was there that he opened the way for our people to put our claims and many others that followed. The Japanese embassy, because he didn't have our sovereignty unlike Haile Selassie, he had a sovereignty, therefore he could go to the League of Nations without nobody's approval and stand before the world government and speak on the issues that were important to Haile Selassie and the Ethiopians. Sovereignty. You don't ask nobody else's approval to stand on the world government to speak for your people. And this is what Haile Selassie was showing. And this is what Ratana and the King movement did not have. The sovereignty and the right to speak on the world platform. The New Zealand High Commissioner J.R. Allen intervenes against the Japanese Embassy because Japan offered support to Ratana to speak at the League of Nations. The League of Nations not in sitting. They logged the claim for the Declaration of Independence in the Treaty of Waitangi, which is now... Uh, instrumental in the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People, which I have some issue with. But Ratana Wales at the Rock of Gibraltar, because he knew that what they were aspiring for in their generation would not come to pass until another generation. And he came with prophecy, speaking of another generation. I'm looking at you all here, and I believe that every one of us here had potential to be that. And just to end, Juji Nakata is stranded in Japan. And as you can see there, prophecy again. Ratana is standing in the kimono, in the Japanese clothes. Juji Nakata is standing in the Korowai, in the Maori clothes. Ratana prophesied the fall of the American economy and the British economy and foretold the rise of the Asian economy in 1924. In 1928, he opens a temple and Ratana Pan invites the first Japanese Christian bishop to come and place a Japanese coin inside the temple, signifying that the time is coming, that the world and the economic powers of the American and the European economy will fall. North will become south, south will become north, east will become west. So Rafa Nahir is foretelling a new time. And all the prophets, including Messiah, Marcus, and all of those that came through foretelling of Haile Selassie, were all speaking of the same time and the same liberation throughout the world, I believe. 8th of November 1924, oh, he was at the music college in Japan. They were stranded in Ratana, and that's how they met, with that relationship. 8th of November 1924, spiritual marriage between two nations conducted. Ratana prophesied the fall of America and the rise of Asia, and the rise of black and indigenous peoples in America and Canada. This is not about preaching hate of the blacks rising up against whites or browns rising up against whites. Neither is it to create fear, because it's not about that. In 1928, 28,000 gave Ratana a mandate and the temple was built. Again, 
This is coming back to the imagery and the philosophy of Rastafarianism and the symbols of the star, the moon and the sun, the eye and I. I believe that the world, the universe, or whatever name you want to call it, the rose known by any other name still smells just as sweet. And I believe that the consciousness all around the world, we are all connected. That what I do to me and what happens to me happens to you. That the world is slowly waking up in FB and we're being reconnected with new technology today in a, in a much powerful way. And just quickly to come to an end, I know I've taken more of my time, more of your time, sorry. In 1936, and again after the rise of Selassie, 1936 after the visits with Savage, the Labour Party is just a close. In symbolism, the broken watch represented constitutional reform. That which was broken under the Treaty of Waitangi needs to be addressed. The sovereignty issue that Haile Selassie was illustrating to us. The issue of sovereignty. The potato was symbolic of the land and that the Māori Land Court needed to be reviewed. It took over 170 years before the Māori Land Court was reviewed under the Tūre Whenua 1994 Act. The huia feather. The huia feather represented tino ranga tiritanga inside the, 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 uh, the treaty, which is done in the first and the second article of the Treaty of Waitangi. The huia feather represents tino ranga tiritanga. <coughs> Haile Selassie had his huia feather intact and still intact. The green stone represented the economic uh, power of our people. And the star moon, as I said, inspired by Marcus Messiah Gavi through the Black Star Liner and also through Farrakhan Muhammad of the Muslim nation and his trip to Japan and Asia inspired him of the star and the moon. This is Ratanapa where I grew up and this is the building called the Manuo of the Man of War. And on top of it, it has seven waka, and Tasman and the Hemskirk. And as our sister talked about Ham, Shem and Japhet. The twelve tribes we believe and all nations have been called here into this country. And that this country stands to be a social incubator of only four million. And so we have a wonderful opportunity to test trial a lot of things in this country that might be possible and hold potential for you and I in the future. Rastafarianism and Ratanaism to me is the one and same thing, for me. Not in terms of culture, not in terms of intellectual, but in terms of inspiring people, inspiring leaders to become agents of change. Kia ora tato. I roto i nei kōrero katoa e mihi atu ana. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, jā, Rastafari, Selassie.